Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be doing a full three-player playthrough of New Bedford. Now, I will be teaching the rules to this game while we are playing it, and I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles so that if I make any mistakes while I am playing, you will see the corrections on screen. Now, New Bedford is a worker placement style game where players are going to send their workers out to a variety of locations in town. Now, they will gather resources that they need in order to build out new locations in town so that they can go to those spots as well as their opponents if they pay them a price. Now, you will also use your resources to stock up your ships and send them far out to sea for whaling, and I will explain how all of this stuff works in greater detail while we're playing. Now, before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that, including voting on one of the playthroughs that I film each month. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up for our three different players. Now, each player started the game with five money, and then we are each allowed to spend money on resources in any pattern that we want. Every wood is worth $1, every food is worth $1, and every brick is worth $2. Now, it looks like we've all decided on slightly different mixtures, including uh, having some money as well. And with that in mind, we can now look out to the middle of the board. Now, right here in the middle, we essentially have the ocean. Uh, this is a round track on the left-hand side, and on the right track is where we will put our ships that are going out to sea to try and catch whales. Now, as you can see, there are 12 spots on this round track, and that shows that we are going to play through 12 overall rounds, and then the player with the most victory points will be the winner after that 12th round. Now, if we look over here to the left side, we can see the town of New Bedford, which is where all of the actions uh, will take place. Well, most of them anyway, there are some actions at the top of this pier. Now on the right side we have a bunch of buildings and these can all be constructed by the players and built out into New Bedford and they will create new action places for us to go. So with that all in mind I think we can look down here and see that we are going to play the game from the perspective of the orange player and we are the starting player as denoted by this captain's wheel. So let's go ahead and take the first turn. Now you may have noticed that we have two workers and so does both of our opponents. Now you never gain or lose the workers as you play throughout the game, and in this action phase what we will do is place one of our workers out onto an action location, and then we will evaluate that spot, and then our next opponent will go. Now after we uh, all have placed one worker, then we will all place our second worker, and once all of the workers are placed, then we can move on to the next phase of this first round of the game. So with that in mind, we need to figure out where we're going to place this first worker. Now in order to make this decision, we need to know a little bit more about how the action spaces work. Now, each one of the five starting areas in New Bedford, as well as the two spots on the dock, can be visited by multiple workers, but the first worker to go to that spot will get a bonus. You can see over here in the farm that by going here you get two food, but the first worker will get another food. Over here at the forest, it's the same thing with wood, and if we look to the middle of the board, we can see the town hall lets us build these buildings out into New Bedford, and the first person to do this can do it at a discount of one wood, one uh, food, or one brick. Now there are a few other options available to us out here, but I think what we probably want to do is head over here to the farm. Now the reason we're doing this is because we obviously get a bonus that will get us three food right away, which will then get added into the two food that we started the game with. We now have five food, and what we are planning on doing is spending a lot of our food to send one of our ships way out to sea. You can see uh, past this dock all of these little food tokens, and that shows that the more food you spend, the farther out your ship will go, and the longer it will be out at sea, and the more whales it will be able to catch. So we are kind of planning ahead for that. Uh, we've now stockpiled a bunch of our food, and now it's time for the yellow player to decide where they will go. Well, it looks like they've decided to head over here to the warehouse. This will let them take one brick into their supply, and then since they are the first worker on this location, they can now take a bonus wood, food, or another brick. And it looks like for their bonus resource, they're going to grab an extra wood and add that in with the rest of their stored goods. Now it is worth noting that all of your resources are always public knowledge, as you can see as they're displayed right here on the player boards. It's now time for the blue player to go, and after considering their options, they want to head over here to the dockyard. Now up here, you can see this lets you prepare one ship for two wood, but the first player gets to prepare one ship for one wood instead. Now it looks like that works out pretty well for the blue player considering they only started with one wood, so they can now spend this and that will allow them to prepare one of their two ships. Now you can see everybody has a small ship, which is ship one, and a large ship, which is ship two. Now the size of these ships is just thematic. Each one of these can store an unlimited number of whales that they are able to catch. So with this, they've decided to go ahead and bring their large ship out. 
which lets them put it over here onto the dock. Now that it's at the dock, they have the ability to use the city pier on a future action in order to launch that ship by spending food in order to send it out into the ocean for several turns to try and catch some whales. Either way, that is going to finish out the blue player's first action, so that means we can now take our second action of this phase. And considering our first action got us a bunch of food, I think we should probably continue on our plan of trying to get one of our boats out. So we're going to go over here to the dockyard as well. And unfortunately, we are not the first one here, so we do have to pay the regular cost. And that will be two wood, which we do have in our supply. So we can put these back into the uh, main supply. And I figure let's send our small ship out. Again, there's no mechanical difference between the small and uh, large ships. We can now add this over to the dock, and the location on the dock also does not particularly matter. Uh, this just means we are now ready to try and send the ship out and spend a bunch of food to have it be out at sea for quite a while. Now I'll explain how uh, the ocean works pretty soon here, but either way, we are now done with our action, so the yellow player can now take their second action of the round. And they have decided to head over here to the town hall. Now at this location, they can now build one of these buildings out, and since they are the first uh, worker on the spot, they get a discount of one wood, one food, or one brick. Now what they have decided to build is going to be this dry dock. Now, as you can see, you can build any of these buildings that you want. There is no restriction uh, beyond, of course, spending the resources that are listed on that specific building. So in this case, we can see the dry dock costs two wood and two uh, bricks normally. And we can see that the yellow player is now going to spend two wood and one brick. And then they use the bonus discount for being the first worker over on the uh, town hall to discount that other brick. Now, once these have all been spent, this will now get built. And you can show that by flipping it over. Now, if you look over at the specifics, the back side kind of explains it all with words. And the front side has some icons, but this says that by going onto the spot, a worker can dock one ship over onto the uh, uh, dock out here, and they spend two wood, and then they can immediately launch it. So this effectively does what two actions would normally do. Now, what the uh, yellow player does is they will now put this into their section of New Bedford, and that is going to be this middle section over here. So they can launch this just like that, and it is worth noting that I have gone ahead and put these little tokens down onto New Bedford to try and make it easier to tell which section of New Bedford is ours. Technically, these uh, tokens are for the solo game, but this works out pretty well for us on the video. Normally, you just have the area of New Bedford that's yours facing yourself on the table. So this will be the area that we are going to build our buildings out. Yellow will build over here, and the blue player will build up here. Either way, we can now see that they have added a new building into their section of the town, and now any player can go onto the spot. But another thing to notice is there is only a location for the first worker. In fact, every single one of these buildings that can be built can only be placed on by one worker, and the yellow player can do this action for the rest of the game for free, but everyone else can also do this action. They simply have to pay the yellow uh, player one money for the privilege of using their spot. So Yellow really likes the idea of this action-efficient spot, and they are hoping that they will be able to use it, and if they can't, well, then they know that their opponents will be paying them money in order to actually use that really good location. So either way, we have now finished out the Yellow player's turn, and I think it's probably worth noting uh, what I've done over here. Uh, as you can see, there are 20 of these buildings, and I've tried to uh, organize them with the different types. All of these up here along the uh, top uh, let you take different resources. Uh, these two right here are a little bit uh, uh, different. The, this one will let you uh, reuse your workers, and this one will let you build buildings at a discount, so they're not super similar. But then down here, these will all generate money, these three right here all have to do with the uh, whaling ships, and these last ones with the brown border are all endgame victory point buildings. So with that in mind, we can now uh, finish out the yellow player's turn, and we can now take the last action of the round, which will be done by the blue player. After considering their options, they decide to head over here to the city pier. Now we can see that this says they can launch one ship for X amount of food, and the first player to go here gets to launch that for X minus one. We can see that the blue player currently has three food, so that effectively means they can send their ship out to the four food location because of that one discount for being the first uh, worker onto the spot. So what that means is they're going to send the ship out to the four spot. They can spend all of this food, effectively showing that they are feeding all of the sailors on that ship. And then they're going to slide the ship over to the leftmost uh, area within this specific spot. You can see there's a first, second, and third location for each one of these C areas, and this means that the blue player has the slight priority in this specific area. Now I'll explain how that works pretty soon here, uh, because they have now finished out their turn, and that means that the action phase is done for this first round of the game, and we can now move into the ship movement phase. 
This is easily evaluated. All you do is you start at the top and you move every ship one spot closer to the return location. Now, obviously, there's just one ship out at sea right now, so it's going to move one space closer, and they are always going to maintain their order within that given row. And now that all of the movement has been evaluated, we can go into the whaling phase. The way this works is we are going to pull out whales from this bag equal to the number of ships total out at sea plus one. So right now there is just one ship at sea, so we are going to pull two of these whales out of the bag, and it looks like we found an open ocean, and then we also found a right whale. Now we can add these into a pool. Let's put these over here to make it a little bit easier to see them, and now that all of the whales have been put into a pool, the ships can start to hunt them. Now you start with the ship that is farthest out to sea, and if there's a tie, then you go with the ship that is farther to the left. Now at the moment, there's obviously just one ship out to sea, and this ship now gets to hunt one of these whales, and there's just one whale. Uh, this open water just means you don't actually find anything. So that means the blue player only has one option, and that will be uh, hunting and finding this right whale right here. Now if you look at the whale itself, you can see that it has $2 in the top left and one barrel, which is the victory point symbol in the game. Now what this means is once this ship reaches shore, then they have to spend two money to essentially pay off their sailors on the ship, and then they will get one victory point at the end of the game, or when they reach shore, they can sell this whale for half of its value, so one money, but then one of their opponents might pick it up. Well, currently the blue player's large ship is still well out to sea, so they're going to put this whale down into the right whale spot of that ship. You can see there's a location for the bowhead whales and the sperm whales, and there are a lot more of these right whales in the bag, a medium amount of the bowhead, and then just three sperm whales in this entire bag. But as the scarcity goes up, the more points those uh, whales will be worth. Now, as the game goes on, more whales will be taken out of this bag, which means there will be more of that open water. So as the game goes on, it will be harder and harder to uh, find these whales, which thematically shows the overwhaling that happened that uh, tragically wiped out so many of the whales out in the ocean. But either way, uh, that is going to finish out the uh, whaling phase for everybody. And you'll notice that we leave this open water token out here for the uh, next round. This will go back into the bag at the start of the next whaling phase. At this point, we've now reached the end of round phase, so what we'll do is have every player collect all of their workers, and then we are going to move the starting player token to the left clockwise around the table. Now, as you can see, uh, the yellow player is effectively clockwise around the table, so I'll be passing it right over here, and we'll just go down here and then cycle as we're playing the game. And the last thing we have to do is move the round token down here to the second round out of 12 in the game. We can now start the first phase of the second round with actions, and it looks like it's going to be the yellow player going first. After considering their options, they want to head over here to the farm, and as we know, that will get them two food, and then a bonus food because they are the first worker on that spot. Next up in clockwise order, we have the blue player, and they've decided to go to the warehouse where they will get one brick, and then for their bonus for being the first worker, they're going to take a food. It's now time for us to take our first action of the round, but before we do that, I would like to mention a bonus action that everybody has available to themselves once per turn. Now that's printed out here on our player boards. It says that once per turn, we may spend three money to take two food, or we can pay three money to take two wood. Obviously, this does not cost a worker, so this is one reason to try and get money, because getting food is good, it lets us go out to sea longer, and getting wood is important for constructing new buildings, as well as preparing our ships to go out to sea. All right, let's now go ahead and place one of our workers because obviously we won't be doing this. Uh, we only have one money at this point. However, one thing we do have is five food. So I figure let's head over here to the city pier. We're the first one to go here and we want to launch our ship out here to the six. And since we are the first, then we don't have to spend six food. Instead, we can spend five. So all of this can go back to the bank as we are effectively feeding all of our sailors. And that is as far out to sea as you can send a ship. So uh, this small boat of ours will be out uh, for quite some time. Now with that, we have now finished out our action. So now the yellow player can go. Now the yellow player has a couple different options available to them. One thing they are definitely considering is spending two wood and three food in order to head over here to the dry dock. That would let them immediately prepare a ship for two wood, and then they would spend three food to send their ship out here to the three spots out here at the ocean. But the problem is, the blue ship is already at the three spot. That means the yellow ship would go into the second location, and they would always be the last one to gather um, uh, whales from this patch. Of course, unless somebody launches a ship even uh, closer to shore than they are. 
Now, they don't like the idea of that because if two of these open water tiles come out, then that means they will likely not be getting a uh, whale for that turn. So instead, the yellow player has decided to buy their time a little bit and do something else. They're going to head over here to the town hall, and once here, they have decided to build this bakery. Now, we can see that the bakery will cost two food and one brick, and so they're going to spend two out of their three food total, and now they don't have to spend the brick because they are the first worker on the spot, and they can take a discount of a wood, a food, or a brick with that bonus. Now we can see that the bakery says that you can take four food when it's evaluated, so they can flip this over and put it over into their section of the city, and it's also worth noting that at the end of the game, every single building that is in your section of the city will be worth one victory point. Uh, some of them are worth more points because they are, can have uh, conditional victory points on them, but either way, this is a pretty good action for the yellow player. They are just building up an infrastructure. Uh, this is a really good spot to get a bunch of food, and obviously the yellow player can go there for free if it's open, or if one of their opponents go there, then the yellow player will get paid one money, and money is certainly a good thing to have around. So with that, the yellow player has finished out their action, which means that the blue player can now go, and they're a bit bummed. They actually have a food and a brick, and they were planning on building that bakery themselves. But either way, that's now gone, so they have to come up with a new plan, and they've decided to go over here to the forest. Once here, we can see that they will get two wood for this, and then a bonus third wood for being the first worker in this spot. And with their turn done, we can now take our last action of the round, and we currently have one money to our name and no other resources. Now, I was hoping to head over here to the forest and just pick up some wood, but I think now the best thing for us to do is to head over here to the bakery. Now, we don't own it, the yellow player does, so we have to give this one money over to the yellow player, but then we get to activate this building, which is really quite good, and that will get us four food. These will, of course, get added into our stored goods area. Now that all of the actions have been evaluated, we can move into the second phase of the round, which is ship movement. Now, we start with a ship that is closest to shore, so that means the blue ship will move up here, and we will move right along there. At this point, if anybody reached the return spot, then we would have to evaluate that, but uh, nobody's quite close to that yet, so we will put that off and now go to the third phase of the round, which is whaling. Now, the first thing we do is we take any of the tiles that were left out here from the last whaling round, and we put those into our bag. We can now shuffle this up, and then the way this specifically works is if there are any ships out at sea, then you draw one tile, and then you will draw another tile for every ship that's out at sea. So just like I said before, that means there will always be one more tile than there are ships. So we can now reveal both of these, and it appears that we have found one right whale. We've also found a sperm whale. Uh, again, there are only three of these in the bag. It's uh, one per player. It costs eight money in order to pay the sailors off for this one, but it gives you four points at the end of the game. Obviously, you can sell this for four money, which is half of that um, uh, lay value, which is what that's called. And then we have one open water. So at this point, we can now start whaling, and we are farthest out to sea, so we get first pick of all of these tiles. Now, coming up with eight money in order to score this for four points does seem like a lot, but we have several turns to figure that out. So I figure let's go ahead and hunt down this sperm whale and put it into our small ship's hold, which we can see right over here. Next up, the blue ship can pick, and it seems pretty obvious. They're going to go ahead and grab this uh, right whale right here. Uh, you can never pick up these open water tiles, and they'd much rather catch a whale than not. With all of the whaling done, we can now move into the final phase of the round, which is going to be cleanup. So we can all pull our workers back into our areas, and then the starting player token will move over here to the blue player. And the last thing we do is move the round token over here to show we are now entering the third round, and we can start off with the blue player by placing one of their workers. After considering their options, they're going to head over here to the warehouse, and they're going to go ahead and take one brick for the main action, and another brick as their bonus. We are next, and I figure let's go ahead and go to the forest. That will get us two wood, and then a third wood as a bonus, and we already had a bunch of food, so we're setting ourselves up to be able to have the wood to uh, prepare a ship, and the food to launch one. Also, getting wood is just a decent resource to have. We should probably start thinking about building some buildings of our own in the uh, our section of New Bedford, so I think this is a pretty flexible first action for us. Yellow is next, and they have decided to head over to their own bakery. That means they are going to generate four food right away, and of course, since they built it, they don't have to pay any money to use it. It's now time for Blue to take their second action of the round, and they're going to head over here to the town hall, and that will let them build a building, and then of course they get a one discount on a resource because they're the first worker here. As you can see, there are still 18 buildings left available, and the Blue player has decided they want a way to get some money, so they're going to build this bank. 
Now, this is quite expensive. It costs four brick, and brick is the most lucrative resource in the game, but they do have a discount of one, and we can see that they planned accordingly and now have three bricks in their area. So blue can now flip this one over and put it into their part of town, and that means they are going to get an extra point at the end of the game because they own that building, and now there is a really nice spot on the board to try and get money. Now, on the baseboard, there is this general store, and it lets you sell as much wood, food, and brick as you like. And the uh, food and wood are one money each, and the brick is two money each, and the bonus for going here is an extra money. But now that the bank is out on the board, I think that's a much more attractive spot, although only one person can go here, and many people can go there. I think people are going to be a lot more interested in getting money once their ships actually start returning to shore because, again, you have to actually pay the lay cost in the top left in order to turn these whales into victory points. So that might be one of the reasons the blue player is doing this. Their ship is a lot closer to shore, so they are planning ahead to try and have a way to get a bunch of money to pay for these. It's now time for us to place our second worker, and even though we have a bunch of wood and a bunch of food, uh, what I'd really like to do is head over to the dry dock and use that for one action to launch our second ship, but we don't have any money, and the yellow player owns that dry dock. So I think one other thing to consider is going over to the town hall and trying to build something into our part of the town, but unfortunately, there is nothing that we can build with these resources. Everything requires either more wood or at least one brick at this point, and we will not get the discount anymore because we're not the first person going onto that spot. Now, we could come over here to the general store and try to sell some of my resources in order to have money so that we could go onto one of these locations that our opponents have built, but I think instead, let's just head over here to the dockyard. It lets us prepare a ship for just one wood, and we have three wood, so we do still get a nice bonus here. Oops, we can go ahead and get rid of this wood right here, and then that lets us get our second ship out onto the dock, and then on the next turn, we can just go over here to the city pier and launch our ship as normal. I do like the idea of this dry dock being able to do a prepare and launch for one action, but at least we're getting discounts by heading over here. So with that, uh, we can now get rid of this wood, and the rest of this can go back into our area. And it's now time for Yellow to take their second action. But before they do, they have decided to do their once per turn bonus of spending three money. And this lets them pick up either two wood or two food. It looks like they wanted the two food. So they can then add that in to the five food that they had already, which brings them up to seven. They also have two wood right over here. And with that, they have decided to head over to the dry dock. Now, before I move on, I think it is worth noting that at the end of the game, every five money is worth one point, so they just got rid of uh, more than half of a point to do this, but they like the idea of the positioning this will give them. So, as we can see, the dry dock does not cost them anything because they built this spot, and it says they can dock one of their ships for two uh, wood, so they will send this ship right over here, and then, of course, get rid of this two wood, and now they can launch that ship at its standard cost. Now we can see that they have seven food, and the biggest cost is six. So obviously they got one more food than they needed, but if they had not spent the three money and just did this with five food, then that means their ship would head over into the second place on this five column, which means they would always be picking after us, and considering how far out to sea the ship is, they like the idea of going ahead and spending all six of these, which leaves them with one left behind, to go to the farthest spot, so they get the first pick, and they can be out at sea for as long as possible. At this point, all of the actions are done, so we can now move into the ship movement phase. We can see that this blue ship will move first, and then we will move, and then the yellow player. And at this point, we can go into the whaling phase. So the first thing we do is we take all of the tokens that were not grabbed in the last round. We can then add those into the bag right here. And then we can see that there are three ships out at sea. So we are going to pull out four tokens from the bag. Now it looks like, wow, okay, we just pulled out four of these right whales. So I guess there's uh, no real decisions to be made right now for us. Uh, there are a lot of these right whales in the bag at this point. Again, thematically, this shows all of the whales out at sea at the start of New Bedford's career. And as we start to actually whaling these out, it's going to become a lot less uh, common for us to find lots of whales. So with this in mind, uh, yellow gets to pick first, and they're going to take a right whale. Then we get to pick, and we will grab a right whale. And then finally, the blue player will also take one of these right whales. Now that all of the whaling is done, we can move into the fourth phase, which is the cleanup. So everybody can grab all of their workers back. And then we can move the starting player token. So it looks like we are going to be the starting player. And lastly, we can move this token here to show we are entering the fourth round of the game. And it will start with us placing our first worker.
Now, one thing that we definitely want to do this round is to head over here to the city pier and launch this ship. Uh, the sooner we get it out to the ocean, the more whales we can uh, catch, and the more uh, time we have to plan ahead to try and get the money we need to actually pay for all of these whales when they actually come back in. Now, I don't think either of our opponents are planning on going here for the first action, so we can hold off on that. And I think instead, we should just head over here to the forest. This will get us three wood, and when we add that to the two wood we already have, that will get us up to five, and that means we are well set up to try and build this courthouse on the next turn. Now, we haven't looked at this one uh, too specifically yet. We can see that it also costs a brick, but if we're able to build this first, then we can get around that with a discount. And this says that uh, whenever anyone goes here, they can build a building for two fewer resources. So I know we are getting into the building game a little bit late, but if we get this out, then we get some discounts on building. And if our opponents go here, then they just give us money and we can use that money to do a variety of different things. So I think that's going to be our plan. Uh, our action is now done and we can take all five of these wood which means that it's time for Yellow to go, and they're simply going to activate their own bakery, which will make them four food. They can add these into their stored goods, and it looked like they already had one food, so now they have five total. So now it's time for Blue to go, and they've decided to head to the warehouse. While here, they will get one brick, and then as a bonus, they're going to take another brick. So that has us a little bit worried because they are now getting resources and they get to go before us in the next round. So maybe they'll be able to get in over here and get that discount before us. But uh, either way, that's going to finish out the blue player's turn. And now we need to go uh, for our second turn. And I think we really don't want to wait over here. Uh, well, I guess we do have that decision. I mean, we could go over here and launch our ship. Or we do have the resources now. We could go to this town hall and definitely get the discount in to buy that building that we need. Now that building does look really nice and it does appear like the blue player is angling to go here before we do on the next round. Uh, so while I do like the idea of sending our ship out and I don't like having it sitting over here at the dock, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to the town hall. I've kind of changed up my plan here and that means we can now go ahead and spend all five of this wood and uh, not a brick here as a discount because no one else went onto the spot. So that means we have now built ourselves a courthouse, and again, every building is worth one point at the end of the game, which is good, but more importantly, this is a really powerful spot for constructing new buildings throughout the game, and I think this will probably end up getting us quite a bit of money as our opponents try to go to the spot, and of course, discounts for ourselves when we're able to sneak in there. So with that, we have now finished out our second turn, and we have stranded our boat on the dock for this round which means that Yellow can now take their turn, and they have decided to head over here to the forest. Now, they are the second person here, so they do not get the bonus, but they still are going to grab two wood for this action, which they can then add into their stored goods area. It's now time for the last action of the round, which is the blue player, and they're going to just go to their own bank, which will allow them to make five money. Now that everybody's actions are done, we can now go into the movement phase. The blue ship will move first, and then we move, and then yellow. And it looks like this is the last round that the blue ship will be out at sea. Now there is one building that can allow ships to stay out at sea. That is the lighthouse here that nobody has built, and it says you can move one uh, ship one space further back, and then actually shove it into the first position. So this is a powerful building, but nobody's built it just yet, so that means it looks like this is the last time for Blue to go ahead and uh, whale. And with that in mind, we can now go into the whaling phase, and we of course remove any tokens that were still left out from the last round, and it looks like there are still three ships out at the ocean. This means we are going to grab four tiles out of the bag, and it appears we have found a bowhead whale, we found some open water, and then we have also found more open water and a right whale. So that means uh, we are now going to look over here, and the yellow player can pick first, and they have decided to go ahead and grab this bowhead whale, and now we get to pick next, and we're definitely going to take this right whale. And that means that there's just two open water left over for the blue player, so they unfortunately do not find anything on the hunt. They're just a little bit too close to shore, it looks like. At this point, we can now go into the end of round phase. Everybody can grab all of their workers back. We can now pass the starting player marker over to the yellow player, and we can now move into the fifth round of the game. It looks like yellow will be first, and they've decided to activate their own dry dock. This means they can go ahead and spend two wood in order to uh, prepare one of their ships, and then they can spend their food to go ahead and launch it, all for this one action. It looks like they currently have five food available to themselves, so that means this small ship for the yellow player will get launched down to the uh, five food spot at sea and go into the first location on that row. So all of this stuff has now been spent, and it's now time for Blue to take their action. After considering their options, they have decided to head over here to our courthouse. 
That means they will have to pay us one money, and it looks like they have six money, so they're happy about that. And I guess we are too. Uh, we had no money, and now we do have one. And I guess we could use this later on to go onto somebody else's spot if we wanted to. And now they're going to go ahead and build this in right here. Now we know that our courthouse allows for one building action with a minus two discount, and it looks like the blue player is going to buy or build this in with one food and one brick, whereas normally it would cost two food and two bricks. Now if we look here, the ability says you can play your workers again using only town and whaling actions. That means just these five on this board and the uh, two up here, uh, these are also part of the town. So this will now get flipped over and added into this spot. And effectively, if somebody goes onto this location, that means at the end of the round, they get to replace both of their workers just on these uh, spots right here. So you get uh, effectively three actions out of that round instead of your normal two, although the uh, options that you have available to yourself are a little bit less with those last two actions. Well, we can now take our first action of the round, and I do like the idea of going to this inn. Uh, we would get three action activations effectively, and we are planning on going to the city pier at some point, and it does not look like either of our opponents are planning on doing that this round. So yeah, let's go ahead and go right onto this inn. That means we will be giving this one money back over to the blue player, the one that they gave us, but this will give us a much better turn, I think, to bulk up with getting more resources. So with that, we have now finished out our turn, and the yellow player can now take their second action. And it looks like they're simply going to go over to the forest, which means they will get two wood and then a bonus third wood for being the first worker in that spot. Blue is now the next to go, and they've decided to head over to the farm. That means they will get two food and then a third food for being the first one there. Uh, they could have gone over to the bakery and picked up four food, but they also would have had to pay one money over to the yellow player, who currently does not have any money, and the blue player decides that's not worth it to them. They're happy with just having this three food right here. We are now the next ones to go, and this is our last action of the main round, although we will get to activate our inn in just a second, and I think we should head over to the warehouse. Currently, we have four food, and we are going to want to launch our boat with one of our in actions. And if we are able to get up to five food, being the first one here gets us to the sixth spot so that we are not going to be next to the yellow player over here. So I think we should go ahead and grab a brick because bricks are good, and then take the one food to make that uh, city pier action better. And now we've finished out this action, but again, before we move on to the next phase, because somebody went onto the inn, that means they're going to pull both of these workers back and then place them both back out onto the board. Now again, I cannot go onto any of these building spots, but I could potentially go onto a location I just went to and receive that bonus once again. Now the first thing we certainly want to do is to head over here to the city pier. That will allow us to launch this boat, and I think we want to launch it down here at the six uh, food spot. Now we are the first worker in this location, so that's going to be six minus one food or five. So we planned that out well, and now we can put this boat right into the first location in that uh, row right there. Now, so far, nobody has actually doubled up in any of these rows. That might happen uh, before the game ends, but obviously we are incentivized to try and go a little bit farther so we get uh, first dibs at grabbing these whales, especially as the whales start to dry up from this bag. Now, with that completed, we do still have one more action left available to ourselves, and right now we only have one brick to our name. Well, I figure we may as well try to get as much as we can for this worker, so let's go over to the warehouse and I think just pick up two bricks. Uh, the first one obviously becomes uh, comes from this warehouse, and the second one comes from the bonus. This means we just have three bricks, and I don't really have a plan for them, but bricks can be a little bit hard to come by, and most of the buildings that we want to build require bricks, although there are things with discounts. Also, we could go to the general store and sell the bricks for two money each. So I think, uh, given the fact that we don't, we're not really sure what our plan will be for the next round at this point, I think getting bricks is a good call. So with that, we have now finished out our in uh, second set of actions, and we can now move on to the next phase of the round. Now that would be ship movement, and the closest ship is this blue ship, and the first thing that happens in this movement phase is it goes into the return spot, and before we move anybody else, we have to fully evaluate this ship. We can see down here that this was their ship number two, and over the course of this journey, they were able to successfully hunt three right whales. Now what happens at this point, as I've mentioned before, is they can spend two money back to the bank for each one of these, and then they can put them over here, and each one will be worth one point at the end of the game. Now another option they have available to themselves is they could select any number of these whales and then take half that amount of money from the bank back into their area. So if they did these two, that would be plus one, plus one money. And then both of their opponents in turn order would have the option of spending full price to actually grab these whales and put them into their areas for victory points. 
Now, if an opponent buys one of these whales, then that money goes back to the bank. So the only thing you really get as a player selling whales is half of that value, and you're potentially helping out your opponents. Now, it looks like the blue player was able to plan ahead. They have six money in lay fees, and they have exactly six money in their play area. So they can now discard this to the bank, and that means they have successfully paid all of their sailors, and they can now cash in for all of these victory points for themselves at the end of the game, and they can be stored right over here in the returned whales section of their board. We can now continue on with the movement phase, so it looks like everybody will get a little bit closer to shore, and now we can go into the whaling phase. The first thing we do is we take both of these open waters and we put them back into the bag, and it looks like there are four ships out at sea, so we are going to pull five whale tokens out of the bag. Uh, it looks like the first things we've found are a couple open water, a couple right whales, and then we have also found another open water, so this is actually a pretty bad day for whaling. Now if we look over here, uh, we get first pick, so I figure let's go ahead and take this right whale right here. Uh, the yellow player gets second pick, so they will grab this one. Uh, at this point, since we both have double ships out, we do have to be careful which ship this goes onto. So we can see that this is our larger ship, which is ship number two. So we can put this right whale down here on the ship two spot of our player board. Next up, the yellow player's small ship will indeed hunt down this right whale, and then with three open water, that means neither of these last two ships will actually find anything. So this will just hang out here, they were both unsuccessful, and we have now finished out this whaling phase. So we can now move on to the end of round phase, and everybody can grab their workers back into their area, and then of course we will move the starting player token over to the blue player, and lastly we can move this token down to show we are entering the sixth round of the game. We're going to start things off with the blue player, and they've decided simply to activate their own inn. Uh, they like the idea of getting three actions out of this round, and since they own it, they don't have to pay any money. So moving on, we can now take our first action of the round. Well, when we consider the fact that our courthouse is currently empty, I think let's head over here. Uh, we of course don't have to pay anything because we own this spot, and with this, I think we should really consider picking up this Triworks. Now the reason for this is because this building says that you can return up to three right whales from one ship for free. Now as we just saw, the right whales cost two money each, and if you return up to three for free, then that's effectively six money worth of uh, actions that you get by evaluating this on the turn where your ship returns back to port. Now uh, we currently have a ship that has two of these right whales on it, and our uh, ship number one is closest to the shore, so it is most likely to pick up more right whales. If anything, uh, it already has two of these on it, so it's already a pretty decent uh, grab for us. Also, this costs three brick, and the courthouse gives us a discount of two. This means we can simply spend one brick in order to complete this, and it will be worth one point at the end of the game, and we can now add this right over into our area, and I think that was a pretty good use of our resources and our action. Next up, it's the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to go to the town hall. Now, this allows them to construct a building, and the one they want to go with is this cooperage. Now, we can see that it costs four wood, but they do get a discount of one because they're the first worker here, and they currently have three wood available to themselves. So they will spend all three of these, and what uh, this building does is it says that you get to earn one money for each whale on one of your ships. So it looks like the yellow player now has an option in their neck of the uh, new uh, Bedford town that will also generate money for themselves. This one is a little bit more conditional than the bank is, but the yellow player does not have to spend money in order to activate this one, and they definitely like the idea of that. Speaking of money, the blue player now decides to use their second worker over here at the bank. It is their own building, so they don't have to spend money for it, and it will generate five money for them. We can now move on and take our second action of the round, and currently we just have two bricks to our name, and both of our ships are long out to sea, so I think maybe what we should do is just go over to the forest and pick up three wood. This gives us some nice options available to ourselves to try and build stuff in the next round. Also, it's more resources that we could potentially use over in the general store to sell some of these and try to get some money. That's definitely something for us to keep in mind because currently our small ship is just, it looks like, three turns away from returning, and we do have two right whales and one sperm whale on that ship already. Now, if we want to cash all of these in, that's already 12 money, and we currently have no money, so we definitely want to start considering uh, ways for us to have the right amount of money to be able to get points for these at the end of the game. So we can add all of these resources into our stored goods area. And now the yellow player can head over here to the warehouse for their last action, and that will get them one brick, and then as a bonus, they are going to pick up one wood. 
So with that, all of the main actions have been completed, but somebody did go over here onto the inn. That is the blue player, so they get to immediately activate both of these again. Uh, once again, they can only activate the base buildings in New Bedford, none of these buildings that were constructed by the players. It appears they're going to use their first worker over here at the farm. They are the first one at the farm in this round, so that means they will get two food plus one as a bonus. And then their other worker will head over to the warehouse where they are not the first, so they will simply grab one brick for that action. Now that all of the actions are completed, we can move on to the ship movement phase. So every ship will get a little bit closer to shore, but nobody returns, and that means we can now go into the whaling phase. So we can return all of the tokens from the last round. Uh, we'll give them a nice little shuffle, and it looks like there are currently four ships out at sea. This means we are going to draw five tiles from the bag, and right off the bat we have a bowhead whale as well as a right whale. And then we also have found, it looks like an open water, another right whale, and another bowhead whale. So this was a pretty good day at sea for everybody. And we now get to pick first with our uh, large ship. And I figure, let's go ahead and grab one of these bowheads. After that, the yellow player can go ahead and whale with their small ship here. But after that, they're going to whale with our large ship. So uh, they have a decision as to which of these whales will go into their hulls. After considering their options, they figure they'll have their small ship go ahead and grab this bowhead right here, and their large ship will take this right whale, and then our small ship will go ahead and find this right whale, and then this open water will stay out here. So this right whale will get added into our hull over here, and it looks like we have three of them already. That means this triworks will be much more effective if we are able to utilize that on the turn where we return the ship. And then over here, it looks like the yellow's ship number one will get this bowhead, and their ship number two will get this right whale. With whaling completed, we can now go into the end of round phase. Everybody will grab all of their workers back into their areas. We now get to be the starting player for the next round, and we can see that we're going to move into the seventh round of the game. Uh, we have now completed six rounds out of 12, so we have just crossed over the halfway point for the game. Okay, we can now start off the action phase with one of our workers, and we can look over here and see that we are just two rounds away from our little ship reaching shore. Now when that happens, we now have 14 money worth of whales on our ship, and it is worth noting that we could potentially sell some of these whales in order to pay the leg cost for other whales within that one given ship, but of course we want to try and get as much money as we can, at least as close to 14 as we can, in order to try and get uh, these four victory points as opposed to just using the money to get less points for some of the other whales. So with that in mind, I think we really need to try and get money. Now one thing we could do is head right over here to the general store. This would let us sell our wood and our food for one money each, and our bricks for two money, and we would get a bonus money for being the first person onto that spot. Currently, we have two bricks, and we have three wood, so hypothetically, we could go ahead and get two, four, five, six, seven, eight money total by going onto that spot. Now, another option is we could head over to our courthouse, and once there, we could go ahead and build a market. Now we could build this for a discount of two, which means we could buy it for just one wood. And what this market lets us do is sell our goods and then earn double price for the first item of each type. So that means we could potentially build this on our first turn with one wood and then come in on the second round and activate this as long as nobody else goes there. And that means that this brick, uh, first brick would be four money and this first wood would be six and then seven, eight, nine. So we get slightly more money and have a better money infrastructure, and this is worth one point. So I think that's going to be good enough for us to go ahead and do this. We'll head down here to the courthouse, and then, as I said, we get a discount of two. So we will spend one wood, and then we can build this courthouse right over here in our area. We, of course, still have two bricks and two wood in our supply, and now the yellow player can take their action. After considering their options, they're just going to go over here to the warehouse where they will grab one brick and then another brick as the bonus for being the first worker on that spot. Next up, we have the blue player, and just like last round, they decide to head over to the inn for their first action, and now that means we get to take our second action of the round. Now we kind of set this one up, so I figure for our second action, we should head over here to the market that we just built, and once again, this lets us sell wood, food, and bricks, and the first of each of those types scores twice as much money as normal. I think we should probably just liquidate everything at this point and try to get a lot of money. So that means the first brick we sell normally is two, but it's doubled to four. The first wood we sell is normally one, so that's doubled to two, so that's six money total. And then this brick will be sold at its regular rate of two, and this wood at its regular rate of one. So that's six, seven, eight, nine money that we can grab right now. 
This is going to put us in a pretty good position for trying to pay for all of these whales. Also, by having money, we now have the option of going on to our opponent's buildings, which are pretty good. And we've gone a couple rounds, I think, without having any money. So having this flexibility to go to many more action spots is definitely going to be in our best interest. All right, the yellow player can now take their second action of the round. And it looks like they are also interested in money because they're going to head up here to the general store for the first one of these actions in the game. Now, they currently have three bricks and one wood, but they've decided to hold on to one brick and a wood and instead just sell these two bricks here. That will be worth two money each, plus one for being the first worker on the spot, so they can get rid of both of these and grab five money total for them. The last action comes from the blue player, and they've decided to head over to the dry dock. Now, this is the yellow player's building, so that means blue does have to pay yellow one money, so this will go into the yellow player's area, and now the blue player will spend two wood in order to ready one of their ships, and they're going to do their small ship right here, and then they have to spend their food in order to launch that ship, and it looks like they currently are prepared. They have six food total all in their area, so that means the ship can launch all the way down to the farthest most spot. Now, at this point, you may be looking out at the number of turns and the number of slots left, and you'll realize that this ship will be out at sea for six turns, and there's six more rounds. And as we get into the deeper rounds of the game, it's very likely that there will be ships out at sea that will never actually return back to port. But that's fine, because once we've finished out the 12th round, we'll move all of the ships in order back to port so that every single one of them can go ahead and cash out the whales on board. So with that in mind, the blue player has now finished out that dry dock action. They, of course, had to spend a bunch of resources to do this, and now all of the regular actions for this phase are done. But somebody did head over here to the inn, so that means this will now activate, and the blue player can now do two more of the basic actions with these workers. After considering their options, they're going to send one of these over to the forest, where it's the first worker, and that will get them three uh, wood, and then the other worker will head over to the farm, where it is also the first, and that will generate three food for themselves. So all of this can now go into their stored goods area. And now we can move on to the ship movement phase. So our ship will move first, and then everybody else down the line. Nobody is quite returning yet, but it's pretty obvious that soon we're going to have a lot of returns as people are trying to uh, go ahead and process those whales once they get back to port. So now that the movement phase is done, we can move into the whaling phase. There's just one tile left over from the previous round, and now there are five ships out at sea. So I think that's the most we've seen so far, and that means we're going to pull six tiles out of the bag. So obviously, as you can tell, the more ships there are out at sea, the more tiles get grabbed and the more whales get uh, hunted. So uh, having so many ships out at sea will cause the overhunting to happen even faster. So let's go ahead and give this a nice mix, and then we'll pull six of these out. Uh, we can start with, it looks like, a bowhead, a right whale, and an open water. And then we'll grab three more tiles, and it looks like those will be another bowhead and two open water. It looks like the blue player's small ship is farthest out to sea, so they're going to get first pick, and they've decided to grab one of these bowhead whales. And next up, we have our large ship. Now, we could potentially grab this right whale right here. Our large ship currently has one right whale and one bowhead, and we know that we have this Triworks building built. This gives us a, uh, well, lets us process up to three right whales on one ship for free, but at the same time, these bowhead whales, uh, while they do cost more money, are worth more victory points if we're able to cash that out for each one of these grabs. So I think we should probably go for that and then potentially pick up some more right whales as this ship gets closer to shore. So that means our large ship will grab this bowhead here. And now we have the yellow player's small ship, which is going to go ahead and grab this right whale. And with that, there are just three open water left out here. So that means the yellow player's large ship and our small ship were not able to actually find any whales. And that will finish out this whale hunting phase. This means we can now finish out the round by having every player return all of their workers, and then the starting player token can pass over to the yellow player, and lastly we can move the round token up to the 8th round of the game. Yellow is going to start things off, and they've decided to head over here to the inn. Now this is the blue player's building, so that means the yellow player must give one money over to the blue player for the use of that building, and again, that's going to allow the yellow player, once all of the actions are done, to reuse both of their workers on the basic actions. Next up, we have the blue player, and they've decided to go to the warehouse. Now, they will get one brick, and they've decided to take another brick as the bonus for being the first worker onto that spot. 
it's now our turn, and I've just realized that I've been misinterpreting the Triworks action. Uh, I thought that this only worked on the turn where your ship was returning, but I now realize that you can actually put a worker onto this location, even if your ship is far out to sea. Now, again, this allows you to uh, go ahead and process up to three of the right whales, and you don't have to spend any money for them. Apparently, thematically, these triworks were in the ports, but also on the ships themselves. So uh, we were going to return this one this round anyway, but I think let's go ahead and play this one out correctly. The moment we put our worker down here, we don't have to pay anything because this is our uh, building area. And then with this ship right here, we have three right whales on it. So we can immediately put those down into our returned area, and we don't have to spend any money to do that. So we banked three victory points and saved six money with that action. Next up, we have the yellow player, and they have decided to head over to our courthouse. That means they have to pay us one money, so this will go into our area. And now the yellow player can construct a building with an up to two discount. It looks like they currently have a brick and a wood in their area, and the building they have decided to construct is this lighthouse. Now, it normally costs two wood and two brick, but they can construct this with the minus two discount. And then I've uh, showed this earlier, but uh, to once again look at it, it says that when it's activated, it can move a ship one space farther out to sea on the whaling track and also pushes that ship into the first position. So they can now add this lighthouse into their area of the city. And then the blue player can now go, and they have decided to head over to the dry dock. Now this is in the yellow portion of the city, so that means the blue player must give the yellow player one money. And now, once they're here, they're going to spend two of their wood in order to prepare one of their ships over on the dock. And then, before they launch that ship, they have decided to spend three of their money in order to pick up two more food. If you remember, that is an action that each player can do up to once per turn to grab either two food or two wood with that three money. And now they can add this two food along with the three food that they already had in their area to go ahead and launch their ship. So this means they're going to send it all the way down to the fifth spot, which just happens to be where their other ship was. So that means they are first and second in this specific area of the ocean. They, of course, have to spend all of these resources. And now we can take our last action of the round. And the only resources we currently have is 10 money. Now with that 10 money, I think we should go ahead and use this lighthouse that the yellow player just built out on their turn. Uh, we can put our worker down right there, and we do have to give one money over to the yellow player for that. And if you remember, every five money is one victory point, so we're not too worried about that, especially considering uh, we have nine more money. Now once we do that, we can activate this, which lets us move one of our ships one space farther out to sea, and we get to push into the starting position for that, and I think we should target our small ship right here. So that means it will move right over here and push the yellow ship back just like that. And so with one worker action, we have bought an entire another round of this ship being out at sea. And in particular, it will now pick um, the whale towels before this yellow ship does here. At this point, everybody has placed out their workers. And now at the end of this round, the yellow player can activate the inn. This means they can go ahead and use both of these workers again on the basic New Bedford areas. And it looks like they've decided to send one over to the forest. That will make them three wood because this is the first worker in that location. And with this other one, they're going to head over to the town hall in order to build another building. It looks like the one they're going to grab is this post office. Now this costs two wood and one brick, but they have a discount of one, so they're just going to buy this for two wood. Now this one wood can go back into their area, and if we look at the details on the post office, it says that whenever you put your worker onto this building, you actually take this building and become the new owner of it. Uh, now the owner of this building will take two money at the end of each round. So this is the only building in the game that actually might hop around uh, from one area to the next. Uh, so the yellow player has not necessarily guaranteed one victory point with this, but since this is the last action of the round, they are guaranteed to have it activate for themselves, generating two money. Also, since it's in their area, if somebody wants to go over here and take it, they will have to spend a money in order to do that, so the yellow player is pretty okay with this move. Now that all of the actions are done, we can move over here to the ship movement phase. So we will move right over here into the first position. The uh, yellow large ship will go right there, and then everything else will move forward, maintaining the same order. Now, after we have moved everything, it's time to go into the whale hunting phase. We can take all three of this open water tiles and put them into the bag, and when we look out to the ocean, we can see that all six of the available uh, ships are in play. That means we are going to pull seven tiles out of this bag after I give it a nice little shuffle here, and let's see what we found. Uh, we've got two bowhead already, and then one open water, 
And then next, we've got a couple, actually three more right whales. And we need just one more token out of the bag. And it looks like we have found another right whale. So this is a very successful uh, whale hunting season here. So we can move all of these over. It looks like that's four right whales that were found. And again, there are only 27 in the bag, but we've already pulled out uh, probably about half of them at this point. Next up, it's time for us to start hunting. Now, it looks like the blue player's small ship will get to pick first, and they've decided to uh, hunt this bowhead whale, and then their large ship will hunt, and they've decided to go after this other bowhead whale as well. Next up, our large ship can go hunting, and at this point, there are four of these right whales left, so I think it's pretty simple. Uh, we are going to grab one with our large ship, the yellow player will grab one with their small ship, and then we will take another one of these with our small ship, and finally, the yellow player will hunt this last right whale with their large ship. So that was six whales that just got hunted out of the ocean. At this point, we can now move into the end of round phase. Everybody will grab all of their workers back, and then the starting player marker will move over here to the blue player, and now we can move into the ninth round of the game. The blue player is going to start things off, and they have been considering going over here to the forest, but at the end of the day, they decide they're just going to go to the inn. Uh, they're okay with doing uh, three actions, uh, with a couple of them not actually being on the buildings that we built. So that means we can now take our first action of the round. And currently, all we have to our name is nine money and no resources. Now at the moment, we can see that our small ship is about to be returning, and I guess we could change that. We could go over here to the lighthouse once again. Uh, that would cost us one money, and it would allow our small ship to be out at ocean for one turn longer. Uh, because right now, if we look at our ship, we can see that we have ten money worth of lay fees, and only nine money over here. So maybe we should go ahead and do that. Uh, I think the yellow player was planning on using their own lighthouse, but uh, I think that it kind of makes sense for us to keep um, pushing this ship out to sea. So yeah, let's send our action over here to the lighthouse. We will pay one money to the yellow player for the privilege of using their lighthouse. And then let's move our small ship forward once again, uh, butting out this yellow ship once again. It's now time for Yellow to take their first action of the round, and I just realized that at the end of the last round, they forgot to grab their two money for owning the post office. So I'm going to go ahead and give them their two money right now. Uh, sorry for missing that on the last round. And then it looks like the Yellow player has decided to come over here to our buildings, and they are going to activate this Triworks. Now, at the moment, if we look down at their ships... We can see that both of these ships have three of these right whales on them, and of course they will have to spend one money to us for using our uh, building, so they can spend that money right now. And at the moment, it looks like their ship number two is closer to port, so they have decided to use the uh, Triworks to go ahead and return all three of these right whales. They don't have to spend any money for them, and they can just put them right over here into the returned whale area. If you're curious about the thematic tie-in with the activation of this tile, I'm pretty sure what this means is they are processing those smaller whales on the ship while it is out at sea. Uh, so obviously the sailors are out there already, they don't have to pay them to go ahead and do that work. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here, and either way, the yellow player has now finished out their action. Which means the blue player can now take their second action, and they're just going to go right over to their own bank, which will generate five money for them. This will get added into their area, and now we can take our second action of the round. And I think we should head over to the warehouse. Uh, we currently have no resources other than money, and when at the warehouse, we can take a brick and then a wood, and the reason for this is because on the next round, we could then use our market, and it will double the amount of money we get for the first of each type of resource that we cash in. And if we sell both of these, that will be a premium of plus two, plus one, or three more money that we'd get, uh, in addition to the three money that we would already get. And at the moment, I think that's probably a good idea, considering our second ship is now quite close to our first ship, and that second ship has quite a few whales on it as well. So that's a lot of money we want to have ready to pay these sailors. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and take these resources. And now the yellow player can go, and they're simply going to head over to their own bakery and grab four food. They can add these into their stored food area, and with that, we have now finished out all of the main actions, and the in action can now activate. That means the blue player can now place both of these workers down onto the standard New Bedford spots. And they've decided to send the first one over to the forest. It's the first one over there, so it will generate three wood. And then the second one is going to head over to the town hall, where they can go ahead and build a building at a discount of one, because they are the first worker on that location. At this point, the blue player has five wood and four bricks. And they have decided to go ahead and buy this Siemens Bethel. 
Now, normally this costs five wood and five bricks, but they get a discount of one. So that means they can spend all of this. And this building is really simple. It gives one point for being a building and then a bonus five extra points at the end of the game for simply having this in their area. And there's no way for it to get removed. So that was a lot of resources that they just spent in order to build this. Uh, but six points overall is definitely something they like uh, having in their back pocket. Now at this point, you'll notice that the number of buildings that we have available is definitely dwindling. Uh, we can go ahead and bring this money back to the blue player. And if we come back over here, we can see that there are three more of these endgame victory point tiles. This one right here is pretty cheap. It's just three wood and two food, and it gives uh, plus one extra point for every two right whales that have been returned in your area. This one right here is the municipal office. It says you get one extra victory point for every two buildings that you own. And this last one is the mansion. It costs four wood and 10 money, and I believe it's the only building that costs money, and it simply gives you four extra points when you purchase this one. So at this point, you can see there are uh, much fewer options available to all of us as we are building out the town. So the blue player can now build this out into their section of the town, and now we can move on to the boat movement phase. It looks like the yellow ship will go into the return spot, and I suppose I can move everybody down real quick, and then we can evaluate all of the returns in order. Uh, there's just one ship at the moment, so let's go ahead and see what the yellow player has on their larger ship. That is going to be this one right down here, and it looks like because they used the triworks on a bunch of their right whales, they only have one whale on the ship now. Now this is a bowhead whale, and it costs four money for them to return it. Uh, of course, they could sell this for half that money, uh, two money, but then one of their opponents would be able to buy this for four money, and that money would, of course, go to the bank. So they have decided instead to go ahead and keep the points for themselves, so they will spend four money, and then they can add this into their returned whales area. Now that movement is done, we can move into the whale hunting phase, and we can of course return any previous tokens. There are currently five ships out at sea, so we are going to pull six tokens out of the bag, and it looks like we have found uh, uh, two right whales, a bowhead whale, we have an open uh, water tile, and we need two more tiles out of the bag. It looks like those are going to be another bowhead and another right whale. As always, the ships farther out to sea get to pick first, and it looks like the blue player has their small ship going first, and they're going to go ahead and hunt this bowhead with that ship, and they're going to hunt the other bowhead with their larger ship. Moving on, our large ship can go hunting, and I figure we will grab this right whale here, then our small ship will pick up another one of those, and then lastly, this yellow small ship will hunt this last right whale here. At this point, the whale hunting phase is over, so we can go into the end of turn phase, all of our workers are going to come back to our areas, and this time I'm not going to forget about the post office. It's still in the yellow player's area, so that means the yellow player will generate two money for that post office, and now the starting player token will move over to us, and we can now move into the tenth round of the game. It looks like we can start things out, and we of course have two workers, and I think what we should probably do is head over here to the inn. Uh, this is just a really nice spot, being able to reactivate some of these basic areas, uh, giving us effectively an extra action, even though that extra action isn't quite as powerful as some of these other buildings. Now, uh, we're going to plan on using our other worker to probably come down here to the market to get a bunch of money because, well, we have a bunch of whales coming in this round, and I did consider uh, going to the lighthouse to push our boat back, but I don't think that's probably going to be worth it. Either way, we do have to spend one money over to the blue player for using their inn, and now it's time for yellow to go, and they've decided to activate the cooperage. Now, this will get them one money for every whale on one of their ships. If we look at their ship number one, it has five whales on it right now, so they will generate five money. Next up, we have the blue player, and they're going to head over to the forest, which will generate three wood for them because they are the first worker on that action this round. This means we can now take our turn, and this is our second worker of the round, and I figure let's go ahead and activate the market. Now we have a brick as well as a wood, and the market will double the sell value of the first item of each type that we're selling. So that means that this brick is normally two, but it's doubled to four, and this wood is normally one, but it's doubled to two. So with this action, we can get rid of both of these and take six money. It looks like this is going to bring us up to 14 money total, so that will be enough for the returning ship this round. But we also have to keep in mind that the round after that, we have another returning ship with a whole bunch of lay fees on it if we want to turn these whales into victory points. We can now move on to the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to activate their dry dock. Now this is going to cost them two wood, but they currently only have one. Now this means they can go ahead and spend three money from their area in order to, once per round, generate two wood. 
which will be enough to prepare this ship right here so they can send it out to the dock and then they can immediately launch that ship at the regular cost. We can see that they currently have four food so they can launch this ship all the way down to the four spot. They of course have to spend these resources and it is worth noting that we will only have three more whaling phases but in the fourth slot here they have positioned themselves to potentially do four. Now they won't actually get that fourth phase, but this does put them beyond the blue ships right here, so that means they will be able to hunt the whales earlier than the blue ships, which is probably a good thing considering at this point so many of the whales have been taken out of this bag. The blue player can now take their second action, and it will be pretty simple. They're just going to head over to the bank and make five money, which they can then add into their area. At this point, all of the basic actions have been done, but we are over here on the inn, so that means we can now replace both of these out onto the basic New Bedford spots. Now, at the moment, we have no resources besides money, so I think we should probably be pretty simple and just send one of our people to the warehouse. Once here, we can have them picking up two bricks, the second one coming from the bonus for being the first worker on the spot, and a big reason to do this is just because that is four money worth of resources that we could potentially sell on uh, the future rounds. Uh, the next thing we should probably do is just head over here to the farm. Uh, that will go ahead and get us three food, which we can use to either relaunch our ship on the next round potentially, or to just sell for more money potentially at our market. So with those two actions done, we can now take all of these resources back. And now we can head into the ship movement phase. So we are going to return first, and then the yellow uh, player's small ship will return right after us. And then the rest of these ships will move forward. And now let's go ahead and take care of returning our small ship. Now we can see on our board that we currently have two of these right whales, and we have this one sperm whale that has been in the uh, this hold for quite some time. This ship was out at sea for a very long time in this game. Now we can see that if we want to pay all of these things, that will be 8, plus 2, plus 2, or 12 total. And I think we want to do that. Uh, that is 6 points worth of whales right here, and we do have the money available. So let's go ahead and spend the 12, which leaves us with 2 money uh, available. And our other ship is uh, poised to return next turn, and we can see that it has 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 money worth of whales on it. And we currently only have 2, so we're not in the best position for that. But uh, that's uh, next turn's problem. At this point, we can simply return our right whales and our sperm whale over onto our board. After this, we can now see that the yellow player has to return their small ship. When we come down here, we can see that this was a well-loaded ship. It has four of these right whales and one of these bowhead whales. But the problem for the yellow player is if they wanted to pay the lay cost for all of these, that would be 12 money. And they currently only have eight money. So this means they are forced to sell some of their whales, and they have to select all of the whales that they will sell uh, first thing before they can move on. Now at this point, they have decided to sell these two whales over here, and they'll keep these in their area. Now when they sell, they will take half the value of that whale. So that means both of these will generate one money for them, which will bring them up to 10, and then they will return all three of these whales with a total of eight money on their lay costs. So they can sort these right over here and then spend eight of their money. And at this point, before we move on, both of these right whales will get sold off to their opponents if their opponents are interested. Now, the way this works is we will move clockwise to the next player, and they have the option of buying one of these whales. Now, the blue player currently has 12 money, and they're feeling pretty flush with cash. They've decided they're going to spend two of this money, and they will buy this right whale here. Now, this money will go back to the bank. It does not go to the player who actually hunted this whale, and then this will go into their area. Next up, we move clockwise over to ourselves, and we do currently have two money, so we could afford to grab this. The problem is that next turn, it looks like our large ship will be coming in, and currently it has 12, um, sorry, 14 money worth of costs on it already, and I think I would rather save our money for that. So we will pass on this, and that means it comes back around to the blue player. And if they pass on it, then this will simply be discarded out of the game. But the blue player decides they want to try and make this work. They're going to spend two more money to the bank in order to buy this one as well. At this point, all of the movement has now been evaluated, so we can now move on to the whale hunting phase. There are, it looks like, currently four ships out of the ocean, so we can draw five tiles out of the bag. And uh, once we pull these out, we can see that we have a right whale. We've got, ooh, looks like one of the sperm whales. We also have an open ocean and another right whale, and we need to pull one more token out. And this one is going to be another open water. As always, the ship that's farthest out to sea gets to pick first, and the yellow player decides they are going to go ahead and hunt this sperm whale here. 
So that's going to go into the hold for the yellow player's large ship. And then the blue player's small ship can go hunting, and they will pick up this right whale, and their second ship will also pick up this one here. So unfortunately for us, it looks like there are just two open water spots out here, so we do not have a chance of grabbing a whale, although at this point, I doubt we would have been able to afford the lay costs for it. At this point, we've now finished out the whaling phase, so we can now end the round by resetting the board, so everybody will get their workers back. We will also move the starting player over here to the yellow player, and the yellow player is still in possession of this post office. Nobody has decided to come over here and steal it from them just yet, so that means they will generate two money for the revenue of that post office, and now we can move into the second to last round of the game. Yellow is going to be starting things out this round, and I know this has happened many times in the past few rounds, but I think that they like the idea of going to the inn uh, with this first action. It is going to cost them one money over to the blue player for using the inn, but the yellow player has very few resources right now, and since this is the second to last round, they like the idea of trying to get a bunch of resources to then try to cash those out potentially with another building or two. So that's going to be their first action which means the blue player can now go, and they're going to keep it simple. They're just going to head over to the bank. That's going to get them five money right now. And now it's time for us to take our first action. Now at this point, we have 14 money worth of whales that are just about to be returned, and I don't think it really makes sense for us to push that out one more round. Uh, at this point, I think we should just try and uh, deal with these whales for now, uh, try to return them and get them processed into points for us. And the best way to do that, I think, will be to activate our triworks. Now what this lets us do is target one ship and we can choose up to three right whales from it and our ship currently has three of those and then we can return them immediately without spending the money so we effectively made six dollars with that action and then these will get flipped over and that just got turned into three points for ourselves. Next up we have the yellow player for their second action and they've decided to go to the warehouse and once there they will get one brick and then they're going to take another brick. Now, a lot of people have been going to the warehouse in order to get a couple bricks, and I do think it's worth, worth noting that there is a brickyard that nobody has gotten around to building. Now, at this point in the game, I don't think it will be built, and I think every time we play the game, a different variety of these buildings will get built out depending on the situation. Uh, for this play, this building didn't happen, and by going onto the spot, you can just gather three bricks. So if this had happened earlier, I think this building would be seeing a lot of attention, but it didn't, considering it does cost four to get made. So the yellow player is simply going to gather these two right here for this worker. Up next, we have the blue player, and they have decided simply to go to the forest and pick up three more wood. At this point, we can now take our last action of the round, and I think we should head over to the market. Uh, we do need some more money. At the moment, we have, it looks like, eight money worth of lay costs that we are on the line for this round, and we currently only have two money. So let's go ahead and go here, and I think amongst all this uh, resources that we have, we should sell this brick. Uh, that's the first brick that we're selling, so it will double its value, so that will be four money right there. And then if we sell a food, then that will double its value as the first one, so that will be two. So all told, that will be six, and when we add that to the two we have already, that will be exactly what we need. However, I think we should probably sell this other brick for two more money. That way we have two extra money lying around for the next turn, so that we can potentially go on to some of our opponent's buildings, giving us a bit more flexibility. So we'll sell all three of these right here for eight money. And then we can add all this stuff back into our area. And now the main action uh, phase is done, but the yellow player is in the inn, so they can now activate both of their workers again. Which will only generate them two wood because they are not the first ones there. And then they're going to head over to the warehouse, picking up two more bricks. So once again, they're really wishing that this brickyard had been built out as an option. So they can add these all into their supply. And then we can head over to the ship movement phase. Now we are going to move into the return spot, and then everybody else will get a little bit closer, and now we can go ahead and return with our large ship and see how we do with the whales that we have in its hold. When it comes right back over here, we can see that it currently has two bowhead whales on it, and we have been planning this all along. We uh, were able to set this up so that we will have the eight money available, so that means we can spend all eight of that, leaving two left over, and we can now flip both of these over and put them face down into our area. So we've actually been able to hunt all three different types of whales up to this point, although we have been much more successful against the right whales. It looks like overall we have hunted eight of these throughout the game. 
Now that all of the ships have finished moving, we can move into the whaling phase. We of course have to return all of the other tiles, and since there are only three ships out in the ocean at the moment, we are only going to pull four tiles out of the bag. So in this case, it looks like we have found a couple open water, one bowhead whale, and then the last tile is going to be a, another one of those right whales. The next thing that happens is the yellow ship will go hunting, and they have decided to hunt this bowhead whale right here. They're pretty sure they won't be able to afford its lay cost, but they can also sell it in order to get two money, and that might help them with the lay cost for this sperm whale that is currently in their hold. So they will go ahead and grab this one with their large ship. And then we can see over here that the blue player's small ship can go hunting. And since they have both of their ships in line, they can effectively choose which ship is going to grab this whale. And they're not too worried about that. There's no big difference between the two for their current situation. So they will have the small ship hunt this whale right here, and the larger ship will come up empty. Now that whaling is done, we can move into the end of round phase where everybody will pick up all of their workers. And then it looks like the yellow player still has control of this post office. Um, that's definitely something we can consider in the final uh, action, the final round of the game to potentially steal this away from the yellow player because it is worth one point. But for now, the yellow player has it, so they will gain two money in revenue for it. And we can now see that the starting player token will pass for the final time over to the blue player. And we can move into the 12th and final round of the game. The first one to act will be the blue player, and they've decided to go to the bank for, I think, the third turn in a row. This is a really good spot for making money. It will give them five money right now, and they have a lot of whales in the hulls of their ships. So they are trying to get enough money to be able to pay the lay costs when they come on shore at the end of this round. This means that we are next, and currently we have two food and two money to our name. Now, having this money means we could go on any of the other opponent spots, although we would be giving them money. But the thing I think we should worry about is trying to get this counting house built. Now, if you look here, it says it's worth one extra victory point for every two right whales that we have. And as I just said, we've been very successful with the right whales, and we actually have four sets of that. So that means if we were able to build this, it would be worth one point by itself, and then an additional four victory points for the conditional uh, thing right there. And we can see it costs two food in order to build and three wood. Now at the moment, we do indeed have two food, so I figure let's just go ahead and head to the forest and pick up three wood so that with our second action, we can do a, um, a building action with it. Now I suppose the other thing we could potentially do is head over to the inn. That would give us a couple, uh, one extra action for the round, and I suppose now that I think about it, the uh, plans that we have for this round don't necessarily require us to go on any of the other buildings, and we do have this other worker that could go on one of those buildings. So with one, uh, with two money to spare, let's go ahead and do it. We'll go to the inn first and delay on the forest. That's going to give one money over to the blue player, which we're not super happy about because it looks like they are having a hard time getting the money together to pay for all their whales, and it's possible that this one money might be enough to put them over the edge, but I think this is worth uh, trying out for ourselves. So we will spend this money to the blue player, and then the yellow player can take their first action of the round. Now they appear to be pretty tight on money as well, but that's not going to stop them from heading over to our courthouse. Now that means they have to give us one money back into our area, and this will allow them to construct a building at a minus two resource discount. At the moment, there are only nine buildings left available, and the one they want to build is this municipal office. This will be their sixth building, and we can see it gives one extra point for every pair of buildings, so that means it will give them a bonus three points in addition to the one point for the building. Now this costs four wood and four bricks, but they get a discount of two. So when we look over here, they have decided they're going to go ahead and spend three wood, and then they are going to spend three bricks, and that will leave one brick left over for themselves. So these will all go back into the supply. And then they will extend out their large section of New Bedford by putting the municipal office right over here. Now, one of the bonus points they could get from this is contingent on them having this post office here, which could be taken away from by, uh, by one of their opponents, but it does cost a full action to do that, and so we all have to figure out if that's going to be worth it to us. We can now move on to the blue player's second and final action of the game, it looks like, and they're going to head to the general store. Once here, they can sell as many resources as they like, and it looks like they have five wood that they will sell. Now, wood is one money each, and then as a bonus for being the first person onto the general store, they do get one additional money. So that means they can sell all six of this wood and gather seven money. This means we can now go, and I figure let's head to the forest. 
that will generate three wood for ourselves, and that three wood plus the two food that we have will be enough for us to build this counting house once we do our in action later. So we are setting ourselves up pretty well right here. It's now time for Yellow to take their final action, and they've decided to head over to our market. Now, in order to do this, they do have to uh, give us one money, and now they are going to sell one brick. Now, this is the first brick that they are selling, so its sell value is doubled, so that means they are going to get two times two, or four money for this. So they essentially went up three money by doing this action. These can now get added into their supply, and we have now finished out the basic actions for the round. This means we can now evaluate the in actions that we have. And I think we should definitely head to the town hall first. This will let us construct this counting house at a discount of one because we are the first worker on the town hall. And that means we can spend two food and two of our wood, which leaves one wood left behind. And once we spend all this, we can flip over the counting house and add it into our area of New Bedford. We now have just one worker left over, and it looks like we have three money and one wood. Now, it looks like we don't have actually an amazing action for this, so we probably should not have gone to the inn on this round. Uh, that gave one money over to our opponent, which might uh, really help them out. So I am regretting going on to the inn. Uh, the only thing I can really think of to do is to head to the general store, but we're not the first ones there. So we can sell our one wood for one money, but we need five money to get an extra point, and it looks like we are going to end up with just four, which is definitely a bummer, but that is how we have finished out our final actions. So now we can move on to the final move ships action of the game. As always, the closer ships will move first and then the farther ships, and now since nobody hit the return spot, we can move into the final whaling phase of the game. Now, as I mentioned before, once we finish out this final round of the game, every ship will continue moving until they have all processed their returns. But for now, we can go ahead and put these tiles into the bag. And it looks like there are three ships out in the ocean. So we are going to draw the final four tiles for, uh, from the bag for the game. And it appears we have found two open ocean, one bowhead whale, and then one more. And this one is going to be another open ocean. So just like that, only one whale was found with this final uh, hunting phase. So you can definitely tell that there are significantly less whales in the ocean at this point, unfortunately. The first to go whaling is the yellow player, and they've decided to go ahead and hunt down this bowhead. And with that, there are no other whales that can be hunted. So this one will go onto the yellow player's large ship. And then we can finish out this turn by resetting all of our workers, although it doesn't really matter because we aren't going to be taking any more actions. Now the last thing we have to process is this post office. It is going to continue giving the yellow player uh, two money. Uh, nobody ended up stealing it, even though the yellow player had that one out for quite a few turns. So this two money will head right over here. And now that we have finished the 12th and final round of the game, we are going to continue to do movement actions until all of these ships have been processed. This means that both of the blue player ships will now return, and they are going to evaluate the small one first. And it looks like that one has five whales on it. It has two right whales, so that is $4 in lay fees. And then it has three of these bowhead whales, which is going to be $12 in lay fees. So all told, that will be 16 money that they have to spend if they want to uh, cash these in for their points. And they are happy to do so, so they will spend that 16 money. And then all of these whales can be flipped over and put into the returned whale spot. Now, after they have completed this, the ship has now come back. And now their large ship comes in. We can see that this ship over here has three whales on it. It has two bowhead whales, which will be eight money for lay fees, and one right whale for another two. So that is a total of ten money, and they do happen to have that. They were able to squeeze out a bunch of money. The last few turns were really all about getting money. So they can spend this 10 money right away, and that means both of these, or all three of these anyway, will get flipped over into their areas. At this point, there's still one ship out to sea, so we can continue with another movement phase. And now that yellow has hit the return spot, we can evaluate the ship. We can see here that they have one sperm whale and then two of these bowhead whales. And over here, there are uh, eight money in their area. Now, this one costs eight, and these two together cost eight, so that means they certainly do not have enough money in order to uh, return all of these into their area. But they can see that the blue player has one money, and we have four. So that means if they sold off one of these bowheads, then they would get two money, and then they would give us the opportunity to buy this one and get two points. Now, they certainly don't like the idea of that, so instead they will sell this sperm whale, in order to gather four more money, and then they can spend eight of their money right away, right here, in order to flip both of these over onto their spot. So that means they are going to end the game with four money at the end, so they are just one money away from an extra point, which they're not too happy about, 
but now this sperm whale can potentially be sold to the blue player, but they do not have eight money. Uh, back to us, and we only have four money, not eight, so we also cannot buy this, which means the sperm whale is simply going to be removed from the game. At this point, the game is officially over, and it's now time for us to start calculating our final scores. We can go ahead and start with ourselves over here. And the first thing we can check are all of the whales that we've returned throughout the game. Now we can see that we were able to get eight of these right whales, which are worth one point each, so that's eight points. And then two of these bowhead, which are two points each, so another four. And then one of these sperm whales for an additional four. Next up, we can gather points for our buildings. Each building is worth one point, so that is four points right here. And then we can see that this counting house will give us one additional point for every two right whales that we have. We know that we have eight of those, so that means the counting house will give us an additional four points. The last thing we can check is money. Five money gets us one point, but we are one shy off of that. So when we add all of our points together, we have a final score of 24. All right, let's see how the yellow player did. In terms of whales, it looks like they were able to hunt down five of these right whales, so that is going to be five points, and then four of these bowheads, and each one of those is two points, so that is eight more points total. And then they can score their buildings. They have six buildings total, so that is six extra points, plus their municipal office will give them an extra point for every pair of buildings they have, and they have three of those, so that is three bonus points. And the last thing we check is money, but the yellow player is also just one money shy of getting an extra point. So when we add everything together for them, they have a final score of 22, which is just too shy of what we had overall. So now let's see how the blue player did. We can start off with the whales, and it appears they were able to collect the most of these out of anybody. They have eight of these right whales, so that is eight points. And then they have five bowheads at two points each, so that is another ten points. Next up we have buildings, and they were only able to build three of them for three points, but one of them is the Siemens Bethel, which comes with an extra five points on it, so that is eight points in buildings overall. The last thing we can check is money, but they just have one left over, so that won't be worth a point, and when you add everything together for them, they have ended the game with 26 points. So that means the blue player is victorious. 26 beats our 24, and we come in second place, and the yellow player has 22 in third place, and that completes one full three-player game of New Bedford. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Overall, I think it went pretty well. Uh, the final scores for all three players were somewhat close. Um, the blue player was able to sneak out that win, and a large part of that had to do with the large amount of whales that they were able to successfully hunt, and they were able to actually turn those into points by getting a decent uh, money engine going so that they could afford to actually pay their sailors for that uh, processing. Now, we did pretty good with the game. We kind of uh, did a uh, medium whale strategy and a medium uh, building strategy, trying to, trying to get some synergy going there. And obviously, the yellow player tried to focus more on the buildings. And it didn't quite work out for them, but I think that it probably could have if they had maybe played the game a little bit better. Uh, there were a couple buildings that were not built out that I think maybe we should have, in particular the one that would have allowed us to build more bricks. And I think if maybe the yellow player had gotten that one out, then people probably would have gone there a lot and given the yellow player even more money and maybe they would have been able to leverage that towards uh, getting some more of those whales actually um, returned in for points instead of having to sell them to the market, which I think they ended up having to do a few times throughout the game. So yeah, overall, um, I showed a couple of the different strategies that you can play, and obviously a big part of this game is uh, trying to send those ships really far out to sea and then uh, plan around the many turns that it takes as the ship gets closer and closer to make sure that you do have enough money when that ship uh, reaches the port. And I think some of us did a little bit better job of that than others. So yeah, I think that is going to wrap up all my thoughts on this one. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support these videos, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.